Hi, this is Leah Dudgeon and welcome to Life Take Two. This podcast shares stories of Filipino immigrants who started a new life in the United States. Moving to another country is a decision that takes more than one step. I hope you will enjoy and listen from our conversations one story at a time. I've been in the U.S. for five years, and I've spoken to hundreds of Filipinos and non-Filipino immigrants, and no two stories are alike. But there is one thing in all these stories. We were all looking for a better life. Let me start with mine. In March 2015, I was in a conference in Florida. Our insurance company in the Philippines sends top managers to the U.S. every year to attend this conference. Coming to the U.S. was always fun. Like they say, nothing beats shopping in America. Every trip, and of course, every shopping, just made America more comfortable and more appealing. I told myself, I think I like it here. And I wondered, will I make it here? And so, on the third year of our conference, in one of the coffee breaks, I boldly approached one of the speakers. She was vice president of a big insurance company. I introduced myself, talked briefly about my career, and asked, If I move to the U.S., will you hire me? The answer was yes. I think she was impressed by the boldness. She also knew that the delegates in that convention were all highly qualified. So I got bolder. I approached several other companies with the same question, and the answer was always yes. So, back home in the Philippines, I casually told my sons about these conversations. At the time, They were ages 16, 18, 24, and 26. I was a single mom, by the way. When I was telling them this story, or the conversations, I was just half-hearted because it was such a gamble and a very risky move. Being a single mom made that more difficult. One, it meant leaving them behind without a parent. Number two, it meant giving up my job of 16 years, which was a very stable and very lucrative job. Number three, there was nothing sure. Where will I stay? How much money will I make? And to make matters worse, I was already 50 years old. Too old, some people would say. I think it was my version of the midlife crisis. I was very surprised when my son said I should do it. In fact, they encouraged me. Now, that was very important for me. It was important that everybody was in agreement. It couldn't be just me making the decision. Every single one of my sons was involved, and everyone had to approve. That was our secret sauce. So, for five months, we had several family meetings to work on our plan. I mean, not one, two, or three meetings. Countless meetings. And I stress the word our, and I'm using air quotes here, Because it was really a family decision. We looked at all angles. I even wrote a plan on paper. One, financial angle. How much will I make? I had no idea about salaries. So I googled that and asked friends. Two, what would be the potential cost? How much money do I need? I would spend for plane tickets, expenses while I'm in the U.S., legal fees, and cost of living. Three, How will it affect my career long and short term? At that time, I was already very established in my insurance career. Four and most important, 
how will my sons manage without me? In the meantime, emails flew back and forth between me and the companies who said yes. I sent them my resume and arranged the interviews. In September 2015, at the age of 50, I left for the United States. The plan was just to do the interviews. If things don't go well, I'll go shopping and I'll be home by December. If things go well, I'll go home immediately to wrap up my work in the Philippines and go back to the U.S. in January. There was nothing really final. So as soon as I arrived, I went to my interviews. All three were in Southern California. All the interviews were successful. But one company wanted to assign me to Nebraska, and I said, no, it was just too cold, and I didn't know anybody or I didn't have any friends in Nebraska. So that left me with two companies. There was a problem, though. There was the issue of the work visa. Both companies offered to sponsor me, but eventually we found out that our timing was off. We missed the September filing of the H-1 visa, and the next round would be April the next year. So, that didn't work out. Initially, it seemed like I was out of options, and I was thinking, should I just go back home? I've done my shopping, and I still had my job. Again, I consulted my four sons, and this is what my eldest son told me. Mom! While you are there, just explore all your options. But remember, don't overstay your visa and do not do fixed marriages. Don't be tempted to do those things. Those were wise words for a 26-year-old. Hey, I am not here to judge other people's stories. But I've always stayed away from complicated decisions. So I sent out my applications, and I found an executive headhunter who got a sponsorship offer for me. They took care of my visa too, and I will talk about this in another episode. So in just one more month, or more than a month, I found a job. The first six months were really tough, emotionally and physically. There were days I almost gave up. I was away from my kids for the first time. But I made it. I got my American dream. If you are at this point deciding, will you migrate? I'll share some of the questions I asked myself. If you do this, you have to be honest with yourself. And there are no right or wrong answers. first question I ask myself, or you should ask yourself, is why do you want to migrate? That is the most important question. I had several reasons, but the most important reason was it has always been my dream. I also wanted to give choices for me and my children. What about you? Is it for better income? Is it to join your family abroad? Is it for adventure or curiosity? Or is it to give a better life or choice for your children? All these answers are valid. Second question I ask myself, what are you leaving behind or giving up? Are you leaving a good job like I did? Are you leaving family behind like I did? Are you ready for months or maybe years of separation and loneliness? Third question you should ask yourself, what's your game plan? See, the problem that I see with some people who go abroad is lack of planning. They think that it's just a matter of buying a ticket and having a place to stay. There are a lot of things to consider and each decision is vital. In your game plan, 
These should be the things that you must consider. What are your marketable skills? Is it something needed in your new country? In my case, I was confident with my sales and marketing background. I knew that no matter where I go, I can get a job. Every organization needs a good marketer. Second thing in your game plan. Have you taken initial steps before you leave or before you go? Before I left for the United States, I already had three interviews lined up. I already made arrangements with a friend where I will stay temporarily. Third thing that should be part of your game plan. What is your backup plan? What if it doesn't work out? I had a very solid plan B, which was, I didn't quit my job in the Philippines yet. I gave myself a timetable, six months or my savings running out, whichever comes first. Why six months? Number one, six months is what the immigration officer will give you when you enter the United States for a temporary visa. And the other thing is, I can still go back to my job within six months. Just knowing that I had this plan gave me confidence and lessened the anxiety. Fourth component of your game plan, and I think very important, how will you finance your new life? I had six months worth of savings to cover my household expenses in the Philippines and my expenses in the United States. How about you? Do you have savings? Do you have investments that you can use while looking for a job and building your income? Another question. Do you have a support network in your country? It is very difficult if you're going to be by yourself. Where will you stay? Remember, the biggest cost of moving is a place to stay. So the first year is always the most difficult. I didn't even have a car, so I took the bus to LA every single day. It meant two hours bus ride one way. My friends all felt so sorry for me. Nobody lives in Orange County and commutes to LA. They say it's just not done. But you know what? I didn't know that. All I knew was I had to make it work. I cannot disappoint my children. So I learned to adapt to new ways. I learned to shower at night, put my coffee in the microwave to be heated in the morning. I had to be at the bus stop by 6.30 a.m. so I can be in L.A. before 9 a.m. Did I feel sorry for myself? No way! I was in L.A. This is the Hollywood place where stars are born. This is where people go for holidays and vacation. I am now living and working here, walking where stars walk. See, it is how you look at the story of your life. I saw it from a different point of view. Everything was exciting for me. Plus, of course, there is the matter of the economics thought to myself and I told myself, I am working the same number of hours, but my earning was multiplied by 50, and that is the exchange rate of dollar to peso. So what are the key takeaways from my story? One is, learn the power of asking. I just asked that insurance VP and she said yes. A yes is always a door opened for you. Number two, when our initial plan don't work out, it's not the end of the story. So the job offer of the insurance companies didn't pan out, but I found a way and eventually found a job. Number three, it is good to take risks, but have planned risks. Not everything should be left to chance. What I didn't know was, when I left in September 2015, 
I will see my sons again after two years with an American husband and an 18-year-old stepdaughter. In the next episode, I will tell you how that happened. I will share how I started a different career, the challenges in the workplace, and the immigration process that I took. If you learned from this episode, please hit the like button. If you know people who are new immigrants or are thinking of migrating, please share this episode and subscribe so you will be notified of new episodes. Thank you very much for listening. This is Leia Dajun of Life Take Two. See you soon.